Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold and S&P uh, fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 24th of June and I um, hope you had a great trading week and if you like the videos that I provide every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the content. Um, so getting into some of the trades that I got into this week before we get into the week ahead is analysis. Um, so the Australian dollar Swiss franc was uh, one of the trades got into about um, three trades this week. Um, and so last week, I um, managed to get in obviously around here you can watch last week's video anyway managed to get in here and then end up getting stopped out but i was um quite bullish on the australian dollar and um bearish on the swiss franc swiss franc um because i did think that they was going to cut rates and uh, i'll just go over some of the analysis that i did in the uh, private members discord area so i said on monday uh, the 17th. I said, morning everyone. If you're looking to get long on the Aussie Swiss, I've noticed that price is in a weekly demand zone. So if you want to take a long position before the RBA and SMB meetings, this uh, Reserve Bank of Australia and the Swiss National Bank uh, meetings this week, a reversal candle or a stop hunt CPR on a lower time frame is valid. And I basically just showed the, uh, the price chart with the uh, weekly zone. So, um, you know, I was looking at long trades. I also said, keep in mind that uh, price will be driven by central banks. Have a read of the latest articles in the Australia and Swiss uh, Switzerland uh, channels, which um, I provide the analysis, the fundamental analysis in here as well from articles. And um, an interesting uh, question from Patrick, who said, uh, when you have setups just before interest rate decisions, where the central banks are expected to hold, like the Aussies case, is it best to wait or is it completely OK to jump in before those news? I'm asking since uh, they are expected to hold as they are. And I know a lot of traders will have that type of question. So I answered it uh, by pretty much said, uh, good question. I think it's fine to enter before the news, but it depends on what price was doing in the lead up to the event. So if price has been devaluing and the bank has are, are expected to be hawkish because it's not it's sometimes it's about the hold yes but it's about the the, the future guidance and what the bank are likely to uh, i guess forecast or project at that meeting so you know i said if, so if price has been devaluing and the bank are expected to be hawkish which i thought that the Australian central bank were because of the fact that uh, jobs was uh, uh, employment was 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 high or higher came in higher unemployment came in lower and also as well inflation came in higher for um, for Australia this month so I thought that they would be hawkish so it says then that is great because you can buy for cheap if they are hawkish if price has been appreciating and the bank is expected to be hawkish, you have to assume that the hawkishness has been priced in. You never want to buy at highs anyway. So in the case of the Aussie Swiss, we have the RBA, which is expected to be hawkish because and price has been devaluing. So that's a tick. And with the SMB, the Swiss National Bank, price has been appreciating due to an expected hold. This ticks boxes as to why I think going long the Aussie Swiss is a decent trade. And so I kind of broke this down again on the charts. I said the Australian dollar index is near monthly lows and we as we head into an expected hawkish halt. Uh, recent uh, unemployment data and inflation data shouldn't or wouldn't support dovishness. So again, this is our uh, Aussie uh, index, uh, which measures the strength of the Australian dollar against all of the uh, other currencies. And it was at these around these monthly lows. So prices had been depreciating and devaluing as they're expected to be hawkish, right? And the Swiss franc, right? So Swiss monthly highs on a hold. So unless you're expecting the Swiss National Bank to be hawkish, I'm assuming that the hold has been uh, priced in. So what's the probability of it going higher, right? So again, we look at the Swiss National, uh, the Swiss franc currency, and it's been appreciating since June. We're already at these highs, and I thought that they were expected to cut. 
So um, also the analysis uh, thinks that the market has changed its mind and priced in a 73% chance of a cut. So um, when I said that the uh, the uh, monthly highs uh, are on a hold and they're expected uh, to be hawkish, and I said that uh, I'm assuming that the hold has been priced in, was because earlier this month, um, the uh, Swiss National Bank governor came out and was very hawkish. So the market was pricing in the, the chances of an actual hold rather than a cut. And then we did some analysis and um, it said here that the uh, analysis uh, on that day, which was here, all right, which was from here, Swiss National Bank, it said here, it says Thursday's uh, Swiss National Bank meeting, which were at 50-50 for another cut, have now swung to 73% in favor of a cut. So that was the most recent data that had come in. And I just said um, that the market has changed its mind and priced in a 73% chance of a cut. And I said, I like those odds. So everything led up to really, um, as prices had come down, uh, the uh, the Australian dollar being cheap in this uh, weekly demand zone. And so my entry was around here on Monday. Yeah, prices pulled back into a 50% retracement, which I ended up getting uh, triggered into going long and also as well the 95% retracement. So I got triggered into three positions, took a one-to-one -one profit on, the, uh, on that position, the 95% took another one to one when prices reached this high here on the 50% retracement and I'm now swing trading and holding the uh, the uh, market order right um, based on the fundamentals and so prices obviously went in that direction based on a hawkish central bank and also as well uh, hawkish RBA and a cut which happened on the which happened on the Thursday uh, for the uh, Swiss National Bank. So um, everything really went in our favor um, for anyone who actually took that trade and that was a really nice trade. So two positions are profitable. Uh, now it's a profitable trade and now I've got one trade and I'm going to be tightening up my stop loss at some point as well so I can't lose the, the third position. So that was uh, that was all good. So that's the Aussie Swiss breakdown. The New Zealand Swiss as well I ended up getting in on this. Um, and this was from a daily zone. So this was the daily demand zone on the Swiss franc. And um, again, ended up entering on this candlestick here. It was quite late. And this was due to the um, the GDP data coming in much better than expected for New Zealand. Prices pulled back <clears throat> Later on that evening, that night, or early in, in early hours of the uh, the morning, and triggered me into a fifty percent, but not the ninety five percent. Now um, I do have, um, and I am actually holding this trade <clears throat> for a lot longer, simply because uh, the Swiss National Bank are uh, holding rates. So typically, what I would do is uh, at least get myself to a profitable position and take profit at least about a one-to-one -one or at least a break-even position and then look to uh, hold this trade. But because um, I think that prices may go up to at least this area here, um, I think that uh, I, I decided to hold it and uh, hopefully we do get that position there. And then my final position on the, um, on the market order is going to be around this area here. So that's where we are. Um, and I'm going to obviously swing trade and, and tighten my stops. Um, the Euro Yen uh, was the last trade, last new trade that I entered this week. And we're going to get into uh, the Euro and the, uh, and the Yen analysis. And my entry was uh, here on Friday. Uh, so I've been triggered again into three positions. We have uh, prices of pullback on a Friday um, and uh, many traders would be fretting, I guess, as to why is prices doing this. Now, I like when prices do this up to here, but obviously now is going to be a bit of a test in time because obviously, you know, could be stopped out. But I have faith that I won't be. And if I am stopped out, then it's fine because I'm looking to continue to short in and around this area again because I do think that prices may roll over. 
one of the main reasons why is due to the uh, European uh, politics and their elections going on, which I think is a risk off event. And uh, again, I covered it last week and I'll give it I'll, I'll cover it again this week um, and the development. So I do think that the euro should roll over. So these are really the uh, the price targets uh, for this, hopefully this week, if I can get it this week. But, you know, medium to long term, I will be uh, holding some of these trades. So um, not far to go for a nice one-to-one -one on that position or that position either. So let's see if the uh, euro gets weaker <clears throat> due to political uncertainty, then uh, this is going to be a really nice trade. And finally, the euro, uh, sorry, the uh, silver to euro. I'm still in this trade um, from, again, last week, uh, around the 13th, where I originally entered around here. Um, I've only got one position now open, took profit on uh, two positions and I've moved my stop up to break even, nearly got stopped out, nearly got tagged on this um, when, when prices spiked down. <clears throat> but again, just like the, uh, the euro yen, I'm expecting silver actually to, to rally a bit more especially against the uh, the euro as we head into uh, that kind of risk off uh, sentiment uh, when when it comes to European politics so um, hopefully this should want to reverse and if not then it's okay if I get stopped out because it's a break even trade well it's not even a break even trade it's a break that that positions break even but I managed to um, make profit on uh, two of these positions on that pullback so actually overall it's a profitable trade idea and also as well if I do get tagged I'll, I'll try and re-enter uh, and go long <clears throat> on this trade so uh, some profitable trades hopefully this week and uh, and yeah so those are the positions that I am currently in so getting into the week ahead and the news and so in the United States the focal points will be the PCE prices report on personal income and spending and speeches by several Federal Reserve officials. Other key releases include the final reading of Q1 GDP growth, durable goods orders, news and pending home sales and Federal Reserve's annual bank stress test results. Inflation rates will be released for Canada, Australia and the euro area. Germany's unemployment rate, LFO, uh, was it IFO, uh, business, climate and GFK uh, consumer confidence will also be crucial. In Japan, retail sales, in unemployment rate and industrial production will be closely monitored. Additionally, Australia's Westpac consumer confidence data will be of interest. So lots going on uh this week but i think the main uh headlines especially for the us is definitely going to be the the inflation so the pce prices as well as uh canada as well so inflation rates for canada australia and the euro area remember if, if inflation comes in higher then central banks are likely to hold which is a bit hawkish and um if they if inflation comes in lower then the um, central banks are likely to continue their cutting, especially for the Canadian dollar. So let's get into the week ahead and looking at the dollar index and the dollar this week um, and the equally weighted dollar index is what I use to measure dollar strength against the basket of currencies. And so um, I'll leave a, a link in the top right hand side. Um, so you can uh, watch a video on how to put these on your charts and why I use the equally weighted rather than the DXY or the uh, USDX. So um, the dollar at the moment is uh, up into this area of supply, which also contains a bit of resistance. I think this week is definitely going to be the, um, uh, I guess, the um, the decision as to whether the uh, Federal Reserve may actually change their tune on um, interest rates at the moment, they have said that they are um, only going to or fewer cuts basically this uh, this um, this year. That's, that was the message that says the Federal Reserve to signal fewer rate cuts this year deepens its divergence from peers 
who have already begun to ease. And it says the message from the Fed was twofold. Not only are officials now only anticipating one rate cut this year compared to three they projected as recently as March, but they also see its easing cycle bottoming out at a higher level than previously expected, underscoring the error of higher rates is set to stay. But if PCE comes in lower than expected, then I think that the dollar is likely to sell off um, uh, quite a lot, matter of fact, as the market starts to price in uh, cuts for September. As I don't think the cuts for September are fully priced in just yet. So September, um, it says there's a 65% chance of an ease. So you'll, you know, the uh, I think the, that will start to increase as we do get uh, if if inflation does start to um, uh, come in lower. So let's see what happens with the dollar. If you are a buyer of the dollar, again, you still have to wait for a pullback anyway. So a pullback into, into this zone uh, to some degree is going to be decent for a potential long trade. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> Not looking to enter into any dollar uh, trades until um, probably just after the uh, the inflation report. Looking at the uh, the dollar yen and the dollar yen, um, we are actually up into intervention zone. So um, the last time the Bank of Japan intervened was in April and it was around that 160 area. Um, and now we're basically pushing back up into that area. So there is actually a chance where the um, the uh, the Bank of Japan may actually start to intervene. So um, this week we did have a bit of um, inflation news. It says here the yen capped its longest losing streak since March, ramping up the risk that the Japanese officials will once again step in to prop up the currency. So this is talking about intervention. <clears throat> the yen weakness comes amid persistent divergence in yields between Japan and its major peers, including the US. It follows Bank of Japan's policy makers declining to lay out details on a reduction in bond buying at the central bank's June meeting. Without a timeline, traders are left wondering when Japan will normalize its policy, meaning basically high rates, uh, a step that should support the yen. So there's there's fears of um, a potential um, you know potential intervention again, and also as well it said here this was the twenty first of June is that consumer prices excluding fresh fish rose two point five percent in May from a year ago, quickening from two point two percent in April. The Ministry of Internal Affairs said Friday the uh, the reading came in a uh, came in a tad below economists' consensus while staying at or above the Bank of Japan's 2% target for a 26th month. Uh, inflation was driven by a 14.7% jump in electricity prices. So inflation came in higher, although lower than economists' forecasts, it still came in um, higher uh, and above the 2% uh, target. So um, there is the, uh, the feeling that the... Uh, Bank of Japan could start to uh, high crates again in their July meeting. So that would be nice. Um, but I think what's going to push the prices down further is going to be another bout of intervention. So um, the uh, the carry trade and the differential between the US dollar and the Japanese yen is too wide really for it to make a difference in terms of any just, just a rate cut. Um, or sorry, a rate hike from the uh, from the Bank of Japan. So um, until the Federal Reserve do start to cut rates, I think the path of least resistance is continuing to the upside. So any pullback should be uh, should be buys. But um, ultimately, just just be uh, be aware that the Bank of Japan could intervene again at any time pretty much from now as they intervened uh, previously at this 160 level. Uh, Dollar uh, Swiss, so the dollar Swiss again this week, um, we had, I was saying last week that if we push back down into this demand zone, this could be nice. And of course, we did get the fundamental confluence of uh, the Swiss National Bank hiking rates in this demand zone. So that was really nice. And uh, basically a push up to um, to this area here. But I think, again, the path for these resistance should be to the upside as long as data supports uh, the uh, the buying of uh, US dollars. Again, we'll see this week when it comes to PCE. But even if prices do come down even to this, this zone, 
I still think that the uh, dollar is likely a buy over the Swiss franc. So again, I think the path of least resistance should still continue to be to the downside. If you do want to be a buyer of the Swiss franc against the uh, the dollar, and you think that the dollar is going to weaken against the Swiss franc, then you're looking at that area of supply or an area up here of supply to look for. Uh, sell trades. The uh, the US dollar, uh, Canadian dollar pair. Uh, again, we're at a nice uh, nice area of demand. Now, again, this week's going to be crucial for both central banks. We've already spoke about the dollar this week. So the dollar's got their uh, core PCE on the Friday. Um, but the before that, we've got inflation for the Canadian dollar. Now, if inflation comes in as forecasted or lower, right, um, I do think that prices should spike up uh, to at least around well actually i don't know how much how far it should go but um it should spike up right because um if inflation is coming down it warrants more cuts from the bank of canada so that's really the uh, the path of travel um but if of course uh, it comes in higher than expected right or stickier doesn't change then i think the, in fact the canadian dollar could still uh, continue to strengthen down to these demand zones the 136 area so that's where we are and again just be mindful of uh, if you are taking this trade that a continuation to the upside is going to be of course if you know the bank of canada um, if inflation does come out uh, lower than expected, any continuation to the upside is then going to be dependent upon what happens with um, the uh, US inflation, the PCE. Looking at the British pound, US dollar, and um, before we get into the British pound, US dollar, um, just wanted to remind uh, anyone who wants to be a member of Trading 180, that we uh, I am in opening enrollment in July, so a couple of weeks from now. And so uh, go to trading180.com if you want to uh, join up and sign up and um, get access to the private mentoring, um, uh, my private mentoring, and also as well just a reminder for the. Uh, for the members that I have uploaded this week's detailed analysis, um, an in-depth analysis, I should say, uh, both the uh, technicals and the fundamentals. And so all the videos for the week as well are in this, uh, in the trading videos uh, member members channel. And this is where I go over all of the pairs and what we're, uh, what we're trading and so as well. Uh, just to let you know as well that I have updated the um, uh, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet with my bias and what pairs I'm looking to trade and which ones um, are on the watch list, the ones that I'm um, interested in. So, um, yep, yeah, if you do want to join, then um, enrollment starts in July. Now, back to the pound dollar. So the pound dollar this week, uh, not really a pair I'm interested in. But if you are, then uh, we've come down to this demand zone. I don't think price is quite taken out that demand zone just yet. Uh, there is supply here as well, as we've made lower highs and lower lows. But um, the pound this week, uh, fundamentally, we uh, uh, the Bank of England, it says here, uh, have breathed fresh life into hopes of an imminent cut in interest rates, hinting that more of its officials may be close to backing a pivot away from the highest borrowing costs in 16 years. Investors priced in more than a 50% chance of a move in August, the first time in more than a month they've been so certain. The UK central bank left key rates on hold at 5.25% on Thursday, but said the decision not to ease was finally balanced. For some uh, of the nine members on the monetary policy committee so that seems um, a bit dovish and so I think there are reasons to continue to buy the uh, the pound against some currencies for example the Swiss franc or the euro but against the dollar um, I think is definitely going to be a lot more trickier but again it depends on what happens this week with uh, US inflation so if you think US inflation is going to come in lower right then in fact uh, these areas are going to be the demand zones are going to be quite nice for a potential buy but if they come in um, if the inflation comes in uh, 
higher than expected or at least stickier than expected, then um, in fact, the um, you're likely to see a bit more downside because the, um, I mean, if you're just looking at both of the central banks, uh, the Bank of England is looking to cut first, right? So you would expect, in fact, that to be priced in. But um, both is like a kind of like a 50-50 call. So it's uh, it's a bit of a difficult one to trade. So for me, uh, I pretty much stay out. I say where it's a lot clearer and trade the pairs where it's a lot clearer. So if you are looking for any kind of sell trades, the first area to look for is up into these supply zones. And if you're looking for a move to the downside also as well, some traders will say, well, that's quite a wide zone within that supply zone. Where do I look for? trades just look for areas where you've got um, confluence other confluences like support and resistance for example somewhere around here or even somewhere uh, around here on the daily or you can go down into lower time frames you know like the one hour or four hour and look for some decent zones so you've got a nice uh, area of support and resistance uh, right here as well so that would be an area that you might want to look towards uh, taking so if prices did come back up to here that's where you'd look for a trade getting back to the daily so um looking at the pound yen and again the pound yen making higher highs really based on <clears throat> the differentials in interest rates blasted through that high um and so we're pulling back or are we uh, we could pull back but um if Again, remember as well that we are at highs on the dollar yen, and so uh, if the if the Bank of Japan intervene, it's going to affect pretty much all of these currencies. And the last time they intervened, um, which was again back in April 29th, uh, the um, the pound yen moved. What's that? 918 pips. So if they intervene again this week. 918 pips if that is going to be another pullback it might be all the way down here right somewhere around these lows so just be uh, mindful of this if you are looking at going um if you are looking at going long um i would definitely be looking at what happened and and the speed with which prices are moving to the downside so let's see what happens but i do think eventually once the intervention has been priced in that at least we should get some sort of a move back up to the upside um, as the, uh, the differential between the pound and the yen is still uh, quite quite big and until the uh, the British pound do actually start to cut rates um, I think that's maybe where we start to get maybe a sustained move to the downside but for now um, I still think the path of least resistance is to the upside but just be mindful of the uh, the pound intervention. I'm sorry, the uh, the Bank of Japan intervention. Euro dollar. Uh, Euro dollar is again for me part of these resistances to the downside. And um, the euro uh, is going through its, uh, uh, I guess, politics. Its elections, election cycle, and the latest on that is that France's national rally. Uh, consolidated its lead in op in opinion polls taken a little over a week ago before the country's snap election with one projection showing the far-right party may win a absolute majority in the new parliament so that's not good for Macron uh, the national uh, rally and affiliated candidates could win 250 to 300 seats in the next parliament against 89 now so that's a massive majority or massive increase in uh, in seats according to the oxoda poll the new popular front could have between 160 to 210 lawmakers while macron's movement could get 70 to 120 seats down from 250 so uh, a massive shift politically which puts a lot of uncertainty uh, on um you know uh, uh France um, uh, policies and the countries going forward so uh, the euro with that risk event um, happening I do think that prices should continue to move to the downside of course um, there are some fundamental reasons potentially why prices may move uh, higher of course the dollar could come out and, uh, and inflation could actually be uh, lower than expected but I think overall the next couple of weeks 
um, the uh, the euro should continue to be really a sell until those risk events um, uh, clear up and uh, are, are resolved. And even if they're not resolved in terms of um, you know the uh, the far right party gets involved, I think the euro is going to remain weak for a while. Euro yen again went over this with the. Um, I'm in this trade now, so with the uh, with the problems that the uh, euro has, I do think that at some point we should want to reverse around here. If not, if the prices go higher, then I do want to take another trade to the downside because I do think that um, uh, the, uh, the euro uh, should remain weak. And if the polls are to be believed and are correct, then again, we should get uncertainty around the euro uh, in a risk off environment the yen historically has uh, appreciated so this should be a, hopefully a decent trade to the downside but uh, if you do want to be a buyer then the nearest area to look for a demand zone is going to be down into this 16860s euro pound again um, the euro being weak the pound although um looking to cut rates they stood they in a better position politically than um than the euro uh, the labor mark uh, labor party are looking to uh, get the majority which is uh, supposedly positive for the pound as the market likes certainty right so ultimately we still have um uh, some sort of certainty with the pound and so there is the potential to look for short trades i wouldn't necessarily look for long trades on the euro only thing i would look for long trades on is if there's a massive surprise and macron gets uh, the majority seats right um and the polls all the polls are wrong so uh, but that doesn't look likely so um i think more short trades is the way to go on the euro pound uh aussie uh, dollar um i favor the australian dollar uh, long so as they are going to be cutting uh, rates um, probably looking like next year well it depends obviously of course on what happens with inflation but they are expected to cut rates later than the federal reserve so um, i think any pullbacks into a nice fresh area of demand zone should be a decent um should be a decent buy um gold looking at gold uh we did pull back a bit on gold and again this week will be determined upon which way prices do go for gold if inflation remains high and even though gold is a hedge against inflation i think what may start to happen is uh, the dollar would strengthen and then we may get a, maybe a bit more of a sell-off on gold but ultimately gold um, over the medium to long term for me should be more of a buy uh, as there is an interest rate cut cycle coming so regardless of what happens in the short term just look at this as maybe a pullback to get gold and to buy gold for cheaper if you manage to miss out on you know these prices um you know maybe about a few months ago so for me um short term depending on what happens this week and with the dollar but ultimately i think uh, i've got more of a long bias on gold and the s p uh making highs and more highs um I do think that the uh, S&P should likely be more of a buy um, on pullbacks at demand zones. And this is really due to the fact that, again, just like gold, the uh, there are uh, we are on an interest rate cutting cycle. And when there is cheap money, um, the stock market typically goes to the uh, to the upside. So now it depends on which demand zone you want to get involved in personally. Uh, I would want to look for at least um, a, a decent size pullback, maybe down into the one five three twos to look for any kind of long trades, or even better would be the one five three. So one one uh, so one five three. What am I talking about? The the five three fives, right? Or the five two seven five somewhere around here before getting um, before getting long a decent size pullback. I think. Um, be, I'll be hesitant to, to buy in and around here. And also, again, like I said, it depends on 
what's happening with the dollar and what happened with the uh, with interest rates so interest rates at the moment the expectation of cuts are driving uh, the s p at the moment and so let's see what happens uh here but i think any pullbacks into you know these lower zones i think are going to be really nice opportunities to look for buy trade so uh with that being said that brings us to the end of the uh video and again just a quick reminder that the mentoring um for trading 180 opens in july so if you do want to uh join um Go to the website and um, uh, in July and then you can sign up then. So take care, guys, and all the best.